begin this section with a page from the board book that my poor little grandson got when he was born. And it's an ABC of science terms, and one of them is V for viscosity. And viscosity of a fluid measures how thick it is. As it says there, this is water, this is honey. You can see they flow at different rates, all right? So viscosity, symbolized by this Greek letter, is the resistance to flow, and it's related to how easily molecules can move or slide past each other. It depends on molecular, intermolecular forces, which we could also call entanglements, as like spaghetti gets stuck together. So the greater the viscosity, the slower the flow. And what people observe is that viscosity is going to go down as temperature goes up. At higher kinetic energy, which is higher temperature, attractive forces are overcome. Think of how as you heat a solid, it becomes a liquid and it becomes a gas. On the right, we have motor oil, and you can read for yourself about the viscosities. But I'm going to talk about something like toothpaste. Toothpaste can be squeezed out of the tube, yet when you squeeze on your toothbrush, it stays together. If you use paint, you know paint is very liquid, but eventually it will harden and make a solid. Well, this is properties that materials can have. And this was taken from a short course that I took when I was in industry. And as you can see, there are many different behaviors. So we're basically just holding you to the fact that viscosity is the resistance to flow, um, how it's related to intermolecular forces, how the greater the viscosity, the slower the flow, think water versus honey, and how temperature has an effect on viscosity. Well, this slide here is actually real life. It was three years of my work at British Petroleum when I worked with aluminum nitride, the semiconductor. We were attempting to make beautiful spherical particles because we wanted to be able to run them through a die press and make 200 pellets, I'll call them pellets, every minute. Well, what happened is they were very sticky. And as you look at these pictures, you'll see, oh sure, there's one that's round, but for the most part, a lot of them look like donuts. Uh, some of them look like little Mickey Mouses. They had like little ears on them. So the story is, um, we were working for a long time trying to get a fluid that we could spray dry that was with these beautiful spherical particles. What happened is we couldn't get it right. We tried and tried and tried. One day I went to work and I was very tired. I had two little children, ages one and three, that kept me up all night. And as I did the procedure for the pilot plant, I made a mistake by a factor of two. Now you think, oh, mistakes are the worst things in the world. You just don't want to make them. Well, when we were trying to sample our particles, we normally would put an index card into a port in a two-story reactor. And normally it would just clog up. We'd pull out this index card, you know, and stuff would just be stuck to it. It was like gooey. Well, that day when I made the mistake, what happened is we put our index card in to try to sample, nothing would stay on it. So finally, when we finished running the reaction and shut it down, what we found is that we had perfectly spherical particles. So this is why I always say, it is okay to make a mistake. Okay, um, the second property that they want you to think about here is um, surface tension, okay? And I'm gonna introduce it by saying, you know, there are some types of insects that can actually walk on water. Why is that that they can walk on water? Well, something happens at the surface of water. And one thing that can happen is a given particle can be attracted to other particles and it puts kind of like a skin on it. So there it is in terms of one, but here it is in terms of a beaker. Notice how individual particles, and these are these intermolecular forces, how particles or molecules or substances are attracted to one another. So for this section, all we want you to do is learn what is surface tension. And it is by definition, the energy that you need to increase the surface area. Like, what does that mean in English? Well, let's talk about what is a liquid. A liquid has a balance of forces, all right? There are cohesive forces. They bind similar molecules to one another. Then there are adhesive forces that bind molecules to a surface. Here, think of something like tape how you can put tape onto something and it sticks. Well, I have two examples for you. One of them involves this smiley face. 
how water can beat up on a waxy surface. Well, a waxy surface is going to primarily be London. London has uh, carbons and hydrogens in it. Um, if we talk about water, water has London dipole and hydrogen bonding. These two forces, you know, they are not compatible, like blood and water do not mix. So essentially the water is going to beat up on the surface and the most stable form it can be is to form a sphere. Um, another example is sitting right here. Let's say I have a glass test tube and it's made of SiO2. It's made of glass and glass is silicon dioxide. If I have water in a test tube, what I will have is a meniscus that has a U shape. That is because the water molecules have the ability to hydrogen bond and silicon dioxide, it has the oxygens that can have attraction to the water. And that will cause the water to rise up. And when you read a burette in the lab, if you have a glass burette, you read right where the meniscus intersects the markings on the burette. Now, instead of I put mercury in here, mercury has only London forces. The glass has the ability to do hydrogen bonding. What we see is a meniscus in the opposite direction, all right? Um, the other example I have that kind of fits with the uh, water um, in the glass tube is capillary action. How nutrients and water go up a tree or they go up plant roots. So again, this is surface tension. It is another liquid property. There are two we'd like you to know. We'd like you to know about viscosity. We'd like you to know about surface tension.